there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on working out order from data. So in this video we're going to look at a set of experimental data uh, and looking at how the concentration of uh, reactants or changing the concentration of reactants has an effect on the initial rate. And then from that we're actually going to deduce the uh, rate expression. So we can only come up with the rate equation or the rate expression uh, by experimental data and so it's very common in the exam for them to give you some data like this here and work the equation out but the word initial rate comes up uh, this time so initial rate is basically the rate right at the start of the reaction when it just starts so this is it right here so if we have this profile here you can see we've got concentration and this is of the uh, reactants so they're being used up so they're decreasing over time. The initial rate of reaction is the one right at the top of the equation, there, right at the start. So this is what this data tells us here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a particular reaction. And we're going to look at this one. So this is nitrogen monoxide reacting with carbon monoxide, oxygen, and that will form nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide. So this reaction is obviously all gaseous, but that doesn't make any uh, any difference. So what we've done is effectively we've changed the concentration and we've repeated this experiment four times. So we've done changed, we've got the concentrations of nitrogen monoxide, carbon monoxide and oxygen, uh, and then we've got measured the rate in moles per decimeters cubed per second. We've then repeated it, but we've changed some of the concentrations. In this case, the second one will change the concentration of NO. And then we're looking at what effect does that have on the rate. But like I say, this data can only be obtained when you do a practical. So we're going to start and write down our rate expression. So um, rate, when we write it down, we're going to put down rate equals K. And we're looking for, in respect to um, other reagents, we're looking for the order. So for example, if we look here, we see we've got NO, CO, and O2. So we'll start with NO first. You can see here that we've got two moles, uh, two times 10 to the minus two moles per dm cubed of NO. Uh, and what we're looking for is a change in NO, but ideally we're looking for uh, a reaction where we don't get a change in CO or O2. That way we can actually measure the effect of changing the concentration of NO on the rate. So, and hence we can work out the order. So you can see here, this one here, you can see we've doubled the concentration of NO here, but crucially, you can see carbon monoxide and oxygen, actually their concentrations remain the same. So we know that any changes uh, in rate is because of NO and not because of these two. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna annotate this, this diagram here. So you can see here, this has effectively been doubled. We've doubled the concentration of NO, uh, but if you look at the actual rate over here, the rate has actually quadrupled. It's increased by four. So we're going to put times four on that side. So because when we double the concentration and the rate quadruples, we say that nitrogen monoxide is second order on, um, with respect to the rate. So or the rate increases at second order. So what we're going to do is we're going to put concentration, NO, and we're going to put a little two on the top. Because when this doubles, this quadruples. Okay, so we're now going to look at the next one. So this is carbon monoxide. Again, we're looking for, um, if we can, we're looking for um, an area where we're changing the concentration of carbon monoxide, but the rest remain constant. Now, if you're looking at this table, you can see that actually here, we've got a doubling of carbon monoxide, but crucially, the amount of NO remains the same and the amount of oxygen remains the same. So any changes in concentration of uh, carbon monoxide, we can detect any change here. Now you can see here, this one's doubled here, but if you look at the initial rates between these reactions, there is no change in rates. So that means that with respect to carbon monoxide, it is zero order. We don't have any change. So even if we increase this, there's no effect on rate. Because it's zero order, we don't include it on our rate expression because there's no effect on rate. Okay, and the next one is oxygen. Now you can see oxygen here we've got uh, a doubling here, it's the only one which doubles, so we have to pick uh, the fourth one, and we're gonna compare it with the first one. And the reason why, again, is the nitrogen monoxide concentration is remaining the same here, and so is the carbon monoxide one here. So any changes in rates can only be caused by oxygen if we're gonna use one and four. So because we're using one and four, we look at the rate for one and four, 0 0.176, 
0.176. So you can see here that obviously oxygen again has no effect on rates. So we say that oxygen is zero order. Um, and so therefore we don't include it in our rate expression. So what we have left is just this rate expression. So the rate expression for this is rate equals KNO2. Now this is really important industrially uh, because actually if we have, um, if we're wanting to increase the rate of our reaction, in other words, to try and speed up the rate and try and get more product out faster, well try and get the product out faster, should I say, not necessarily more, but we're getting it out faster, time is money in business. Now if you wanted to make sure you get it out quicker, you're going to need to know which reagent is going to have an effect on rate. And out of this reaction here, the only one which is going to affect it is nitrogen monoxide. Uh, and this one actually has a significant effect on rate because it's second order. So if we just double the concentration of NO, we actually quadruple the rate of reaction. But doing it to carbon monoxide and oxygen, you just wasting your time because it has no effect uh, in terms of rate. So there is a more complex example of this as well. Sometimes you might get, um, for example, on these ones, you see here where we doubled this one and all the rest were constant. Sometimes you can get rate tables where that isn't the case and you get uh, changes in two of them. So uh, that's a little bit more difficult. There's a slightly different method for working that out. So um, if you want to look at that video, a more complex example, just click on the uh, link below and you can see that video there. But um, other than that, that's it. There's your working out order from data. Bye-bye.